Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. Hope you're having a wonderful day. You're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I am one half of your host, uh, Church Blissett. Uh, the other half of the host, our host, he's actually in the air right now, uh, flying out to an event to speak. Uh, so he won't be with us today. And uh, his name's Joshua Crouch, if you're not familiar with the show. This show, we focus on service business owners, managers, and technicians who are considering becoming business owners themselves. And our goal with this show is to help answer some unasked questions or help remind you or refresh you uh, your mind on, on information and, and things that you've known in the past, just forgot to, to do or implement. And uh, that is really kind of what we're going to go into today probably not something that you've known and forgotten uh because well i take that back we're going to talk some about uh story brand if you've ever heard of donald miller uh, building a story brand uh today's guest rick bergman he actually is a um story brand oh man guide that's what it is. God, I, I had a brain fart there, uh, but he uh, he's a certified story brand guide. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and what that means. But also we're going to talk chat GPT. Uh, it's a buzzword of uh, AI, machine learning, that kind of stuff has, has been really hot and heavy here lately. And we're going to talk how that can help grow your home service business. That's one of the things like I've been playing with it a lot, like every day i'm i'm doing tons with chat gpt and um all the different plugins and everything else that that come along with it and a lot of times it's like how do i figure this out for a home service business and so we're going to talk a little bit about that today and uh, i'm super excited to to hear what rick's done and uh how he's made that successful before we get started with that i want to give a huge shout out to the people who make this show possible uh upfrog they they do a great job doing tons of different things. I'm going to talk about the uh, the retargeting. They they retarget your audience, your existing audience. Oftentimes we are guilty of give me give me give me new audiences, give me new technicians or clients that uh, I want to reach out to, but we ignore the ones that we have already there in our bucket, and we have that hole in the bottom of the bucket that just is constantly dumping technicians out or technicians uh existing clients out and technicians uh and so it's one of those things where it's it the program reaches out to those existing clients and uh just re-engages them uh so they do a lot more stuff if you have any questions about them don't hesitate to reach out to them up, up uh, sarah is next billy and his team billy was on the, the podcast last week uh just an amazing group of people it's a crm uh and it's it's an upcoming CRM that uh, really uses a lot of AI in itself, and uh, they do a lot of machine learning within their program. And it's a really cool platform. I've, we're recent, we just recently onboarded with Sarah, and so I'm super excited how to see what direction that's going to take the business. Uh, Emerson, Emerson Technologies, they are a uh, they're in all the HVAC equipment that we use, uh, but they want to reach out and, and help support our show because they do a lot of technician training and uh, also helping local um, tech schools really uh, excel in their training. If you have a tech school that needs some some help, some support in their HVAC world, uh, reach out to Emerson and uh, reach out to me and I can get you connected with the right people. Emerson's a big company. If you send it to a general inbox, it might not go to the right place, but uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'll get you connected with, with the people who... Um, can really help to make that happen to they're, they're really interested in helping support the trades and grow technicians and then last but definitely not least company cam we use company cam in our business company cam is great for tons of different things but what i really love the, about company cam is the before and after photo uh the way that they can take well first off i'll tell you company cam is a digital asset management tool so all your images can go into one place. You don't have to put them in like Google Drive and then figure out how to search for them later and all this other stuff. It, it's very easy to search the images. The metadata stays with the image, which is very important if you want to upload it to something like Google and get some more rankings. Uh, you can actually uh, upload it straight to your website. And uh, that just helps geotag your locations, which helps with Google um, My Business stuff, which is not called My Business anymore. I can tell you a lot of things. I'm not the marketing guy. Um, I know some of the marketing jargon and I will tell you that it just helps. Uh, 
company cam. If you use uh, the link in our bio, that uh, will actually get you 14 days for free and two months at like 25% off. Uh, it says it when you click the link. But if you're interested in that, if you're curious about it, uh, don't hesitate to reach out uh, and get signed up for your free trial. With that being said, I'm super excited for today's guest and I'm super excited to talk to him about all kinds of stuff that I nerd out about uh, and learn some more uh, of what he's experienced. But let's get started with today's show. Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven figure revenue mark? Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Welcome to the show, Rick. Hey, thank you so much for having me on, Tersh. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, it just so happens that uh, Josh commented. I don't even know where Josh is. Uh, <laughs> I thought he's in the air, but maybe he's uh, sitting in the airport. But uh, I appreciate it, Josh. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Um, so if you don't mind, would you introduce yourself? It's really cool how we actually got connected. And um, I, th I thought that was kind of funny in itself. But uh, yeah, just share who you are. Right, right. Yeah. Well, uh, again, thanks for having me today. I, I am sad that I didn't get to meet Josh also, but I'm glad that he's here uh, in the chat. But uh, no, uh, everybody, my name's my, my name's Rick. Um, I help small businesses who feel like their marketing just is a waste of money, not be a waste of money. Uh, really, what we're struggling with uh, as business owners is we struggle to get people's attention. Uh, something that I, I talk a lot about with my clients is we have we're getting hit with, on average, it's estimated 4,000 to 10,000 ads a day. Uh, and so it's very hard for your business to stick out in all of that noise. Uh, and it's very hard to get past. And we can talk about this in a little bit, but I call it the secretary in your brain that blocks the, the that protects the decision maker from ever paying attention to your, your brand or your sales or your advertising, whatever it might be. So uh, that's something I like. I love how you said that you love nerding out over that stuff because I love nerding out about it. Uh, and I love watching small businesses make more money because uh, let's face it, most of us got into small business because we saw a problem. Uh, we wanted to fix that problem. And we also wanted to take really, really good care of the people we love by doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And also we got into it because we want to be rich. So there's <laughs> that too. No, I'm just right, kidding. Right, right. <laughs> it's so often that uh, I talk to technicians and they're like, man, if I could just be a business owner, I'd make so much more money. Like, yeah. well, you're going to starve for a couple of years. Uh, yeah. and, and then you then won't sleep. You don't for... <laughs> yeah, your health may decrease, you know, decline mm -hmm. uh, tremendously, but thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Um, how we as technicians i was a technician i was a service technician in the hvac world we see how much success the business owner has and don't realize that you know it could be a 10-year overnight success like right. yeah they're there everybody knows them but they were 10 years where nobody knew who they were and they were trying to figure things out uh mm -hmm. and it's really cool to have and it's kind of a, a segue here into the um you being a guide and it's, it's nice to have people like yourself who can guide others along with building a, their their own story and yep. what all that entails can you share what it even means to to do that absolutely so um and i'm going to nerd out for a second but this is all very important because it's why it, I'm, I'm setting up for why it matters to use the power of story um, because we've all heard that and a lot of business owners here, yeah, I need to tell my story. Well, that's where I'm going to, that's where I'm going to advise you to do something different. I don't want you to really focus on your story because the fact of the matter is people don't care about your story. They care about their story. Uh, we're selfish people sometimes. Uh, and so really what it, it boils down to, uh, and this is, this is the key is we got to understand that, uh, our brain is designed to do two primary things and this is going to sound primitive, but it's very true. 
the first thing is going to be survive and thrive. So whatever, whatever your brain is, look, your brain is constantly scanning your surroundings for things that are going to help them survive or thrive. The way I tell a lot of explain this whenever I'm doing like a keynote or a webinar is uh, if, if you think back to yesterday, the second stoplight that you got to, do you remember the color of the truck next to you? Of course <laughs> not, because that information is totally uh, unhelpful to you. Now, yeah. however, if you had gone up to that same stoplight and that truck was on fire, would you remember that? Absolutely, because now you're in a survival situation, right? Uh, and on the contrary, if you had gone up to that same light yesterday and Dwayne the Rock Johnson was in there and he gave you one of those high eyebrows, you'd remember it because why? Because uh, celebrities help us thrive. They give us status. We love to brag to people that we met a, a celebrity or we have an autograph or uh, whatever it might be. So that that's why we remember that versus it just being the color and nothing happening. The second is going to be conserving calories. Uh, so, so if you, and this is where I see most um, businesses make a mistake is they don't understand that your brain can only handle so much information. Uh, it really, it's really designed to conserve calories because it burns calories all day long. Uh, and that's why 30% of our day on average is spent daydreaming. That's actually a survival mechanism that we have built into us to conserve those calories. Uh, and so where a lot of us go wrong with our marketing and our sales is we give so much information that's uh, uh, starting to overwhelm people. Um, for example, if you go onto somebody's website and they say, oh, we were founded in 1988 and our company won the local softball league, you're starting to give people so much information that, that you're going to lose them and they're going to yeah. drop out. And one of my favorite examples of this is if you ever want to see that in real time, just start talking to somebody about your fantasy football team. And they are just going to absolutely <laughs> drop it. It's past. zoned right out. Yeah, like, you're going to see eyes glaze see over. Their, oh, 100 percent. They're going to stare <laughs> off into space and start thinking about the deck that they want to build this summer. Uh, and so really, that's that's the key. And like I was saying originally, uh, not only are we getting hit with all these ads and all, all of this stuff wanting our attention on top of that, our brains are consuming more information in one day than somebody living in the 1700s is consuming in an entire year. So our brains are on overload right now. Uh, and so what I, what I, the way I explain it to folks is any of you who have ever been in sales and most people have in some capacity, when you want to go and land that big account uh, and you don't know anybody in there, the first person that you come into contact with is the secretary. And one of the, the primary objectives of a secretary is to preserve the time of the decision makers yep. because their day is going to get wasted if they're if they're having to talk to all these salespeople and tire kickers and whatnot. And so uh, how do you how you get past that is by doing those two things that I talked about, survive and thrive and then conserve calories. And that's where story comes in. So story has been has been used for thousands of years. My personal favorite teacher of all time and the most influential man in, in history, Jesus Christ, taught with parables. Why? Because he understood that people were going to pay attention and understand hard concept with short stories. Uh, and it's just the way our brains are wired. And so it's important to understand that because um, where a lot of us go wrong in our marketing is we want to tell our story. But people remember, people don't care about our story. What they want to do is they want to know. Can you come in and be a part of my story and make my life better? That's really what it boils down to. So let me ask you this. What if you don't know how to tell stories? Like what if you're not a storyteller? Uh, like you're a consumer of stories. You love listening to them and hearing mm -hmm. them. Uh, but you're not the one who is the, the – because there's, there's people who are naturally good storytellers. And right. they, they're the ones who at a party – everybody's you're not going to believe this like yeah that as soon as you hear that in this deep south like that <laughs> is going to be a good story you know what i mean right. and and the fish is always bigger every time every i mean it it, it was <laughs> like a foot long now it's like yeah. 12 foot long and, yes. and but th that person becomes the life of the party almost or right but i don't believe everyone's born like that or any right you know that's that's something that can be developed and can be taught and learned how how does that how do you like it do you have like a guideline like all right this is the you know main character and then this yep. here's your yoda and then the, you know x <laughs> y and z but sure like share that yep. with me 
So, so that's, that's a great question. So if you look at the art of story, um, there's about, I think the way I understood is there's about eight different plots out there. Um, and there's no new plots. All of these new plots are the ones that typically win Grammys and they're terrible movies. The critics are just tired of the original eight plots that we get in every movie. Right. Um, for example, for those of you who watched, you know, Pocahontas growing up, um, they repackaged it and called it avatar later on. It's the same movie. (laughs) Uh, it's just a little different. So um, what I'm saying is, yeah, th- that's a good question. How do you 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 know make a structure if you're not good at storytelling? Um, well, what I typically uh, you know walk through with my clients is is we start off with the main character, and that's your customer. They are the hero of the story, and that's where so many people get it wrong is they they don't they don't count their customer as the hero of the story. They want to be the hero story that swoops in and saves the day gets the girl and flies away, right? But the thing is, is that doesn't work. Uh, what we can do with our marketing is we start with our main care, our customer who's our main character, right? So this main character typically has a want, and it's usually a deep-seated want, uh, depending on your, uh, your industry. For example, let's say you're a landscaper, their deep-seated want is they want, they want the backyard that all of their kids and their friends want to come and hang out at. Uh, that's, that's really what they're wanting. They're wanting to provide a really great place for their kids and their friends to hang out at. Um, however, they have problems. So in any good story, there's going to be problems if you, and that's why we're in business because we solve problems. Um, a pushback I get, just a side note, a pushback I get from people is like, Hey, my business can't be a story. Uh, you know, I'm a pillow salesman, whatever it might be, right? It's not true. If you're solving a problem, you have a story. Uh, the example that I love to use also is for any of you that have seen Taken, uh, Taken, you know, with Liam Neeson with the famous, I've got a very s- specific skill set. I love that line. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, if, uh, and this is, this is one that I like to use, but if he had gotten a phone call from his daughter after she had been adu- abducted and he, you know, he's on his way to uh, Europe and she said, Hey dad, it was just a college prank. I'm actually okay. Can you come and do some grad school shopping or so- sorry, would, could you come and do some shopping with me? And talk about grad school and the next 90 minutes of the movie is them shopping and talking about grad school it'd be a terrible movie all oh, right right yeah. you, you wouldn't pay attention and so uh the structure is you start with your character your character has a want and they also have a problem uh, and they typically have three different problems but i'm just going to talk about the one that's most obvious to people and that's we call it the external problem uh, let's say that you have an hvac company um they have a hot house right? Their house, their air conditioner isn't working. We're about to get to that time of year where those phone calls, I'm sure about to start spiking up. I live in West Texas where it's, we'll have 105 days for 10 days straight. Uh, and that's a very big problem. And so that's the problem that they have. Uh, but they need somebody to come along and fix it. And this is the most important part. This is the guide. And I loved how, uh, Tersh, how you and Josh in your intro said that you were the guides to help these folks become better business owners, um, which is the best place to be, right? We love guides. Um, I know that you had mentioned Yoda. Yoda is kind of the classic guide. He, Luke was a worthless Jedi. Let's be honest. He was yeah. worthless. He had to have some guides come and help him be awesome. Uh, he had Obi-Wan Kenobi and he had Yoda. Um, one of my favorites is Happy Gilmore. Um, Happy Gilmore desperately wanted to take care of his grandmother. Um, and he was trying to do it through hockey, but it wasn't working. However, he met a guide who was uh, Grubbs, right? Grubbs with the missing arm. Mm-hmm. Grubbs mm-hmm. came along and showed Happy, hey, Happy, here's how you can actually take care of your grandmother. Even though he doesn't say that, that's what's the deep meaning behind what's going on. He basically is showing him, here, I'll equip you to become a professional athlete so that you can take care of your family, which is what he wanted. Uh, that's just the beginning of the story structure. There's a few other parts, but that's really the best place to get started. A resource I always tell people to go and check out is if you have not listened to or bought Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller, it outlines all of this very, very well. Um, it's a book that I read myself, even as a guide, uh, two or three times a year, just because it's always got so many nuggets and it's so helpful. Yeah, that's a good, really good book. It's a, it's a pretty easy listen as well. So uh, talk about somebody who can tell a story. Uh, you know, obviously he's great at it. Uh, right. Donald Miller, uh, he wrote the book on it, on it, obviously. Uh, <laughs> so let's, um, let's kind of transition into sure. how you and I actually got connected. And, uh, I, because I'm on TikTok a lot, like it's a guilty pleasure of mine and <laughs> it's, 
I like I used to be on Facebook a pretty good bit, but I can go a week without being on Facebook, but not yep. a day without TikTok. Um, and recently I went through and and really honed in like who's targeting me, who like who can get um in front of my eyeballs and right. on TikTok. And when I did that, I, one of the things I put in there was I wanted to know, see more about digital marketing. I wanted to see about AI. I wanted to see about things that are really relevant to the podcast and relevant right. to the business. Uh, and so then I got bombarded with chat GPT stuff. Like every third scroll was uh, somebody talking about it. <laughs> but the moment that I seen your post, I mean, instantly, I was like, all right, stop. Let's pay attention here. And right. uh even I, I commented on your post mm -hmm. and that's how we got connected through uh, TikTok, which is wild uh, to yep. think about three or four years ago, whenever my son was on it or whenever it was musically or whatever. Right. I was like, come on, kid, this is a waste of time. Like, let's <laughs> let's go on and do something else with your life. And uh, now it's here. It is. We're, it's connecting us together uh, to talk about chat and AI and, and all of that. So share a little bit about you, what you what you've done with chat and how you've kind of used it uh, to help your clients. Right. No, that's a great question. So um, naturally, I'm a marketer, so I like to go where the attention is. And ChatGPT is definitely it. Um, I would say that people I th my, my theory is people are getting a little overwhelmed with it. Yeah. Uh, and so it's it's third. And also people are afraid of it, right? So we were afraid of cell phones at one point. Um, I remember getting our first cell phone car or cell phone in the car. Where we thought that yeah. was a big deal. People yeah. were wondering if it was microwaving their brains at that point. Uh, you know, so there's all these these things that are kind of scary. Um, but the cool thing that um, really whenever I was looking at ChatGPT and I was like, okay, well, is this going to, to rob me of all of my money and income? Is this going to replace <laughs> me? Should I just, you know, yeah. go and do something else? Uh, but the thing is, is what I've realized is that essentially these, this AI is going to become the new Google. So whenever we had a question, we would go to Google and ask Google and hope that a good search would come up now. And it's like, you know, um, how long should I leave my apple pie in the oven? Right now you can go to chat GPT and you're going to get an answer right away without having to scroll two yep. miles down on those recipe pages that are all SEO laden, uh, to find mm -hmm. out how long you're supposed to find your, uh, apple pie recipe yeah. um and so that i what i what the frame that i've started to use with chat is it's essentially if you had a super smart working for free coworker, that's really what chat is uh you can ask that's like that coworker that always has ideas always can can help spark uh frameworks or or ideas like i was saying uh at, in a moment's notice and so i really where i use it the most is can you can you help me understand um, how I could do this maybe a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm obviously, since I'm a story brand guy, I'm very in, interested in messaging because messaging is so incredibly crucial to marketing. Um, if I'm struggling to say something a certain way, I will ask ChatGPT, hey, will you give me 10 different ways to say this? And I'll put it in oh. quotations and it'll give me 10 different ways. Now, I will say that it's very, it's imperfect. Uh, you still need to use your expertise uh, whenever using it, but it will give me, it'll at least give me an idea of how to, you know, reword something or a framework that I can go off of to use uh, for some sort of marketing project that I have. But essentially it's, it's a really smart coworker that can help speed up processes because really any giant leap in technology is just meant to save time. Uh, Google saved us time. The internet has saved us a lot of time. Phones have saved us a lot of times. Automobiles have saved us a lot of time. It's really just a new piece of technology that saves us time. What do you think about using it to write the blog post for your website? So there's 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 several different um, views on that, and a lot of people don't know. Yeah, uh, there is there is rumors that SEO na on a national level is going to really diminish. Now that's not really going to matter for most uh, service based businesses because they're going to be focused on local SEO, which is great. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in local SEO. Uh, but the national SEO is really, there's predictions that it's really going to struggle uh, because there are sites that are cranking out a, a thousand blogs a day. Yeah. I've seen one where there was like 7,500 blog posts in one week. Yep. Like how, how to make 7,500 blog posts in one week. I'm like, 
blows my mind. Like right. I have like 30 blog posts on this website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, uh, it's interesting. Cause you know, I was writing my blog post just six months ago, you know, using this little keyboard thing. It's, I know it's ancient technology, but uh, I had to use this, <laughs> this keyboard to write a blog. Right. But um, you know, there's, there's also lots of rumors and I think they're true. Uh, but a lot of these websites, and I know Google is for a fact, but they are scanning for AI um, written content. Um, now it's. Do it's you not think they're going to penalize for that on the blog post if it's if it's like generalized information that like if, if as long as I'm just curious, like because Josh and I talked about this a little bit a while back, mm -hmm. and it, it, the uncertainty's been there. And he right. obviously with him doing marketing, he's in all the chat boards and all that stuff. And I don't know yep. this. Sure. So that's why I lean on him with this stuff. And, that's great. Um, one of the things that he mentioned was the the what is the name of this the page that um is all about you as the business owner I, I, it's not the about you page but basically it's it's the about you mm -hmm. blog post and right. he said that that one you you absolutely cannot have ai write that that needs to be you writing it about you your story telling your story and and this stuff and, and just to make it authentic about you um, but there's so many other people that are, are going to go that direction where they're letting, whether it's chat or Jarvis or anybody else writing these blog posts for them. Right. That it's, it's, I don't know, like, I, I, so this is me just purely me, not Josh at all. Like, I feel like Google is going to penalize people who use it until they come out with their own AI software like chat. Yep. And then they'll be like, okay, y'all can, yeah. can use ours. Yep. Yeah. So they, they did come out with their own. I just haven't used it yet. It's called Bard. Uh, yeah. And so you can, you can experiment with it. I'm going to, I'm going to start experimenting with it. However, I think ultimately the point of Google and the point of, you know, these search engines is to help you solve your problem. And I think that a lot of this AI generated content is going to get penalized because it's a bunch of SEO focused content that's yeah. maybe not helpful. Yeah. Uh, and I think the less helpful your content is, the less likely it's going to pop up and actually help your business. Yeah. And so, um, you know, in my personal opinion, if I know, like if I went to one of your websites, Tersh, and you were, I know, I knew that you wrote it and it's coming from you and not something else. I'm a much more likely to want to do business with you because I know that it's authentic and real because I think authenticity and authority is going to be basically your keys to the kingdom going forward. Because I think we're going to have so many people that are uh, like, if we thought catfishing was, was a problem in the past, uh, <laughs> I think, Holy I think cow. Uh, cause I, you know, I was talking to my folks the other day um, and I'm not trying to be a fear monger or anything, but do you, do you remember how bad a lot of older folks were getting, you know, uh, scammed Scam. by Nigerian princes just over a, a dial up telephone. Um, yeah. Like it's like now they can take, especially those of us that make content, you know how easy it is to go and take our voices off of our content and call our family members using our voice. Like yeah. there's going to be some, some sketchy stuff there. And so what I say all this to say, I think authenticity is really what's going to end up winning out when it comes to artificial intelligence stuff. Yeah, I, I agree 100% there. And that's going to be, so here's the other thing with that. There are some people who are so good at prompt engineering that mm -hmm. they're getting stuff that almost seems authentic because of how much information they're giving chat whenever they're creating the prompt. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's it's getting better. I think we're only scratching the surface. I I, I was um, I was talking to a client the other day who has a chat bot um, that will automatically response will talk to leads, and uh, he's he's essentially programmed it to sound like himself. And it'll even it'll even misspell a word on purpose and then type the word correctly and put the little asterisk next to it and send that so it looks like it actually is wow. human correcting itself. Very freaky. <laughs> yeah, that's wild right there. I mean, that's to, a, as a business owner, it's crazy. Like, it's good to have something to help support you because we're pulled in a thousand different directions. Uh, but at the same time, you mentioned being authentic, and that's that's the 
it's hard to make something like a machine become authentic with you. I mean, you really, it has to learn you and then you're giving it so much information that it's scary almost that it has ability to learn you. Um, right. Right. But essentially, I mean, it's machine learning and that, I mean, that's kind of what it does. Um, and I'm not an engineer when it comes to this stuff. And this <laughs> stuff, and the thing, I think the thing that freaked most people out was they introduced chat GPT and then it was like the floodgates opened and you had, Oh, GPT four is out. Yep. And then you have the plugins that are available. And now like there's apps that go straight into GPT. Like you can have it on your phone and all this other stuff. And now it goes, I mean, it goes straight into my Slack. I asked Slack a question and it yep. pops up instantly that, you know, the answer to me, and I'm like, Google what? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't have to do that. Right. So I think that that's part of what overwhelms so many people. And there's a lot of people who are, and I wouldn't say stick their head in the sand, but it's like, all right, I'm going to let this play out for a little while, see where it, where it lies in a right. couple months. And then we're going to try and learn it then. But then you're almost behind the eight ball on that, you know, if, right. if you're not paying much attention to it. I don't know. Right. That's just my opinion on that. Yeah, no, I am. Um, I'm a big believer. And, you know, I think folks need to use it and experiment with it and kind of get familiar with how it works, because I, I genuinely believe it's going to be one of those things where it's you either learn it or you're just going to be behind, uh, which was a big a factor in me. I was like, you know what? Because at first, whenever this thing came out, I was because I do a lot of copywriting. Uh, and if you don't know what that word means, it's essentially a salesperson behind a keyboard. Uh, but it, it does a lot of that for you. And I was like, well, man, this thing is going to take my job. Uh, however, you know, it's, it's really good at regurgitating things. It's already known. It's not good at coming up with new, uh, creative things all on its own. And don't ask it to do math. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's terrible at math. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's a, I, I tell everybody on any of my chat GPT recommendations or any AI for that matter, you are the expert. You have expertise. It does not have expertise. Bet it with your expertise. That's exactly right. Now, whenever you, when on the first ad that I seen or the first um, TikTok that that I seen, you actually mentioned that you had some um, prompts that you had already pre built for people to try out. Right. Uh, where's Where's the best place for them to try that or to get the access to that? Sure. Sure. So. Uh, Included in the, I just mentioned real quick, I know that you were talking about prompt engineering. Um, yeah. I was actually able to team up with, with a couple of folks off of a discord that I found that was all a bunch of prompt engineers. And there's a really neat brainstorming prompt, which is what I always put into chat GPT before I do anything, because it seems like the responses are so much more creative and, and helpful. Uh, but the best place to find that honestly, is just, if you go to any of my social medias, it's the link in my bio. Um, I'm everywhere at Bergman marketing. So that's okay. B E R G M A N marketing. All right, cool. Um, plugins. What's your favorite right now for chat? Oh, oh, for chat GPT. Um, yeah. I think, I think one of my favorite things I really like doing, I love doing avatar work, uh, or some people call it customer persona. It just depends on what part of the country you're in. But, um, essentially, you know, if you can understand your customer, like, yeah. like the back of your hand, it's like, you know how to sell to them, especially if you're not like a gifted salesperson or a gifted marketer, if you understand your client and it'll give you some really good frameworks to go off of, uh, when you start using some of these, like, can you build me a customer persona and it'll build out. And I, I usually say, uh, for a HVAC company in, uh, Savannah, Georgia, right. It'll crank out, uh, you know, Tracy Smith who makes 120 to 140,000 a year and has four kids and a husband uh, and it'll, it'll crank out this, this fake person. But the great thing is, is that that person is sounds about who you normally work with. You can start using, you can start asking chat GBT questions about that customer. Um, and my, my prompt guide has several follow-up prompts to that. And it'll be along the lines of how could I separate myself uh, to entice Tracy to want to do business uh, with me versus my, uh, competitor and it'll tell you, well, Tracy values energy efficiency, <laughs> you know, just yeah. like it'll give you all these ideas yeah. uh, for your marketing material or your emails or 
social media posts on like, Hey, did you know that this new unit we're using is going to save you, you know, up to 50 bucks a month on your electricity bill, like stuff like that is going to yeah. speak to your customer. If you know your customer really well, that's where I, that's one of my favorite prompts that that's in there. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, that is, I'm excited to try that out. Um, the, uh, what do you think about AI images? That's my last question with AI. Oh, good. So are you talking about for like blog posts and stuff like that? Yeah, just in general. Yeah, blog posts, uh, social media posts, like because it's uh, I play with it a lot and I'm right. I'm struggling to get something that I would deem acceptable to put out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and they're, they're I'm, trippy. I'm watch. Oh, yeah. I'm watching <laughs> videos on it. I'm like, man, I'm just not getting this engineering down. Uh, somebody recommended Mid Journey. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, I have. Uh -huh. So it's and I'm not. A ma I'm not a massive Discord user, right? It's like Discord exclusive, and so I'm right. learning Discord while I'm also trying to learn Mid Journey, and then my images are coming out like cartoons, and I'm like, this that guy's <laughs> image, that gal's image does yep. not look like a cartoon. Why is that not like? So I'm like right. trying to figure this stuff out, but like, would it ever? I mean, do you think that it would be okay to use that um, image? on a blog post i i think i think i think so i just don't know if the tech is there quite yet because whenever you do a lot of image stuff like you'll look down and they'll have six fingers and so it's like you you don't want to do that because then people are going to be like what is going on uh, with this picture this guy has six fingers on one hand and hit one arm way shorter than the other it's, uh, it's hilarious um so i'm actually going to share uh, a picture really fast and let me see if i can bring this up um and this is oops i clicked the wrong button um this image is for those people who are listening uh the most realistic image that i've been able to find of i think this is is this it yep that's it a technician and he's holding something and this is the one i've created here he's holding something that i don't know what what yeah, this kind of looks like a vape <laughs> yeah it looks like a vape pen or something but it's supposed to be working on an air conditioning unit yeah and uh and, and like this is after me like copying other people's prompts and other yep. stuff and yep. like just trying to get a technician in a black polo shirt and khaki pants working on an air conditioning unit like that's right. my goal and then right. this is the best that i've come up with yeah uh, you might so, try you might try to prompt it to tell it just the service technician uh posing and so that way it's more of like a natural like pose instead of them actually working uh you might have a little more work because i i don't think it understands what you know an air conditioning unit really looks like yeah it it gave me some like recommendations oh actually you know what let me let me share this again um it, so it gave some recommendations below that image and the recommendations that it gave, they're like pretty good. I mean, and, and I, yeah. I wrote, I like, I copied their prompts and I even came up with crazy images when I copied their prompts. So there's some, there's just a lot of in the back end settings and stuff like that, that yep. you just have to learn. And it's, that's, it's not for the faint of heart. And so it's right. like, it would be easier for me just to go out and take a picture of a one of my guys posing this right. AC unit than it is to do that currently, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think um, I think it's going to get better. Um, you know, the one that makes me laugh is they there was a there was somebody who used all AI to make an American beer commercial. I've never done acid, but I'm sure that's as close as it gets <laughs> because yeah. it was so trippy. Like if you want if you want something funny to laugh at, go and Google or you go to YouTube and type in AI beer commercial. Um, it, they use mid journey was how they generated the people. And then they use this other AI app that turns it into video. And so it's, uh, it's a wild ride. That's hilarious. <laughs> Rick, man, I really appreciate you hanging out with me. What's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Sure. Uh, I just kind of reiterate again on on the where my 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 prompts are. It's the same place, the best place to to keep up with me and to get some more tips, uh, so that you stop wasting money on marketing is going to be at Bergman Marketing. It's B E R G M A N Marketing. 
Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me and, and talking all this this good stuff that I, I really could nerd out for days on this stuff. And so I uh, appreciate you hanging out with me. <laughs> I appreciate it. If anybody has any questions at all, do not hesitate to reach out to to Rick on social media. Um, he's he's there. He responds quick. I don't want to over promise you, but no, uh, no worries. just based on my experience, he's he's been <laughs> great and very responsive. And so. Uh, if you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Service Business Mastery is the website. Uh, just come there and and hang out. Um, there's a chat bot at the bottom, and it's not AI. It actually is Josh and myself. It goes to us <laughs> and goes to our cell phones. So uh, with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful and safe week. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, and uh, we'll talk again soon. We'll see you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.